Short-lived radionuclides are needed for patient care, but decay very quickly, making the transportation difficult. A generator allows for the creation of a short-lived radionuclide, which is derived from a longer-lived radionuclide. This describes the parent-daughter relationship of the molybdenum generator that produces technetium for patient use. A significant number of daughters can be produced from the parent during a process called elution. All right, for our uh, radionuclide generator, um, this device works by uh, basically simple chemical separation. Uh, we use an evacuated vial to pull saline through the system, and the normal saline, uh, as it is pulled through the column, it chemically separates the technetium 99M from the molybdenum 99, and in the end, we end up with radioactive saline in the form of sodium protectantate. The process takes about five minutes, and in the end, no saline is left on the column. All of the saline is pulled through the vial, and that's the way the system is designed to operate. Owing to the rate of activity of the generator, we can elute or milk the generator up to twice a day. The generator reaches near full equilibrium after about 18 hours. A standard, general-use saline charge valve is suitable for flushing the concentration of the daughter radionuclide, Technician 99M from the generator. Ensure that you are wearing your lab coat, badge and gloves. Gather the materials you'll need, a saline charge vial and a collection vial. The collection vial will have enough vacuum to pull all the saline through the generator. As the collection vial will be radioactive at the end of the elution process, it is placed in a lead shield prior to elution. Swab the tops of the saline and collection vials to ensure they are sterile. Remove the old saline charge vial by pulling, not twisting, the vial and dispose of in the hot trash. Place the new saline charge vial on the generator by pressing directly down. Remove the collect needle seal vial from the collection port and set to one side, keeping sterile with an alcohol swab. Place the collection vial on the collection port. The elution process begins and lasts for about 5 minutes. You may notice the saline charge vial bubbling during the elution process. Before removing the collection vial, swab the needle seal vial with an alcohol wipe and discard the wipe in the hot trash. Replace the collection vial with the seal vial and quickly cap the collection vial. Two impurities may be present in the eluted solution, molybdenum and aluminum ions. Excess molybdenum will increase the patient dose without providing benefit. Quality control tests are performed to rule out the presence of these contaminants. The safe quantity for the administration of technetium 99M is less than 0.15 microcuries molybdenum 99 per millicurie of technetium 99 at the time of injection. For the aluminum ions, if the color at the center of the eluate is less red than that of the standard solution, it has passed the aluminum ion breakthrough test. A dose calibrator is used to test the eluate. A dose calibrator consists of two cylinders separated by argon gas. There is a current applied to one of the two cylinders. The current will not travel through the inert gas unless it is ionized. Once a radiation source is added to the dose calibrator, current flows, providing a measurement of the radioactive dose. Bring the lead-lined canister to the L-block and place the container behind the shielding. Remove the lid, invert the container and lift the lead cover off so that the vial stands free. Using a pair of tongs, grasp the metal ring on the top of the vial and place it in the dipper. Then insert the dipper into the dose calibrator. If the reading exceeds the limit prescribed by the NRC, then the eluate is contaminated. Molybdenum-99 contamination is usually caused by migration of the molybdenum-99 in the lumina column with successive elutions. The amount of molybdenum-99 which is eluted with the technetium-99M should be as small as possible because the contamination by the longer-lived radionuclide increases the radiation dose without providing any benefit to the patient. Once the reading is obtained, remove the vial from the dipper, place it in the lead-lined container, invert and replace the lid. If, during the breakthrough test, you fumble and drop the vial, do not reach for it with your bare hands. Instead, use the tongs to replace the vial into either the dipper or the lead peg. This is performed to detect any excess aluminum that may have been introduced during the manufacturing process. To extract a sample for QC testing, use a 5 ml TB syringe. The secret to successful cap removal is to pin your dominant hand against your body so that it remains entirely immobile. 
Grasp the cap with your non-dominant hand and pull the cap swiftly away from the syringe, all the while your dominant hand remains still. Standing behind the L-block and with the vial secured in the lead calibration receptacle, invert both so that the liquid flows to the bottom of the vial. Insert the needle into the vial and draw until you can see just a little liquid filling the syringe. Using the aluminum breakthrough kit provided by the manufacturer, place one drop of the eluit on the corner of the chromatography strip and one drop from the aluminum standard on the other corner and look for a color difference. If the standard should appear much lighter than the technetium, then there is excess aluminum in the eluit.